Reborn Podcast, and may it be the Princess of the Universe. Hi, folks, I'm Matt. And I'm Bruce. And I'm Steve. Hi. Hi. We got new mics. Yay. Hopefully people can hear it. We'll find out. Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm going to soundproof this room now. Yeah. But, yeah. So, um, special thanks to the uh, podcast Saga of Steve Rogers uh, for mics and a mixer board. Yeah. Wow. Oh, fancy. nice. I know. It's pretty high tech. I wish some of you were, were closed for this one, though. I thought we were going to agree to, you know, that the pantless podcast was going to stop. But <laughs> we're saving that for the, the Q&A session. The Q&A, the live <laughs> Q&A afterwards we do this. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, so I just need to go right in it. Crossroads of Twilight. We have a lot to talk about? We have a whole lot to talk about. <laughs> so, I'm confused. let's talk about it. <laughs> we can read the same so, book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about this one. So, first off, I'd like to say it's not that good. Okay, so uh, <laughs> other topics that we have coming out. There's no movies coming out, but uh, no. how was no. your day? Uh, pretty good. Good. Built some shelves. Good. I'm good. working a lot. Working a lot? Yeah, I'm working a lot, too. You know, I'm working um, all on Pacific time right now, so it's like I start at 9, which is nice, but then I have to end at like 6.30, which kind of sucks. Okay, so let's get back to... So, you're saying your day is short and that sucks? Oh, 6.30 or something. Well, it's later on. Oh, I have to like, work uh, later on in the evening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I see. And this is way more interesting than Crossroads of Twilight right now that we're talking okay. about. So I hear Louisiana's going to get rid of daylight savings time. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Or, no, stay in daylight savings Who? time the whole year. Yeah, uh, uh, the U.S.? The whole year? No, no Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, I will hope we do that. We shall be. I would only want to do that if the other states around us join us. I don't want to be on a different time zone than do, Arkansas and Mississippi. No, do you know Arizona does that? So sometimes they're the same as California, and, sometimes and then sometimes they go to Mountain Time. Mm-hmm. They let the whole world switch around them. I love it. If Louisiana, I would be proud to be in Louisiana <laughs> if we did that. It's the state of common sense. That's what we should change our name to. Do I hate daylight savings time? I despise it. Let's not put lies on our uh, billboards. <laughs> okay, so um, in Crossroads of Twilight, every woman in this series is actually woke. Um, totes, yeah, totes my goats. Um, a man gives her an approving nod, and she gets furious. That's right. And why? Because we have to. She doesn't need a man's approval. No, she doesn't need a man's approval. Um, but the man better know what she wants. But yes, right. she is. Yeah, she's weak, but how dare he anticipate what she wants? No, he should just know. Yeah, and and, and yeah. So he, just get very realistic in, in his portrayal. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like every woman is on their period the whole Think time. <laughs> and you, you just, I know, I know. There's, yes, I'm too weak, and I'm angry about that. I'm angry I'm not strong enough as him. I'm angry I need his help. Or um, uh, she's wearing that low-cut dress. I hate her. She's just, how dare she? She doesn't wear low-cut dress in the series now. And then, oh, wait, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah. Riding on a... I can't think of anyone. (laughs) Riding on a horse and hearing another conversation and gripping the rein. You want to say something, but you can't. So whoever it is, she grips the reins of of the horse until her knuckles are white. Ooh, because she wants to say she's so mad. I can't remember. I, I didn't write down the name here. And I just think this is the way Robert Jordan sees women. Insert, insert name there. I mean, it could I be mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> do you think Harriet was just sitting there with white knuckles, just listening to Robert Jordan? He's like, "What do you want, Winch? I'm not your Winch. I'm your wife." You know. <laughs> I mean, it just—it's just like it, maybe had him locked in the basement and wouldn't let him come out until he wrote something. Maybe, maybe she put him on the deadline. Yeah, I mean. You, you mean that she had, she had him in bed with a little cinder block between his uh, no the little wood block <laughs> between his uh, uh, ankles? Yep, tied to the bedpost. Yeah, with a knife in it. Bring passion back. What was the what was that series that he had to write for uh, Misery? Oh, passion was it? Was the girl's name Passion it, or something? Yeah, it's something so. like Passion or Prosperity or something like that. Yeah. Don't kill her mm-hmm. or something. Bring her back. You yeah, know. It's been forever since I've read Misery. I know, and that's it's still book. more interesting than Crossroads of Twilight. <laughs> it's a good book. You know, I've never read it. I really? need to no because oh, the thing is, I've never movie. read. I've seen the movies, yeah. and I need to read Stephen King books. Oh, he. I just don't. He I, I, a, I should. He is a master of character development. Not a master right. of ending stories. No, he no, makes he, good characters, but uh, he tends to lose it. You know, so he's kind of like order. the uh, he's kind of like the J.J. Uh, Abrams. 
of novels. Yeah. You know, <laughs> J.J. Abrams can make like a fantastic film. Yeah. And just turn, you know, watch, uh, what was that? Super 8. Watch Super 8 and turn it off within the last 15, 20 minutes. Oh, it, it sucks. sucks. Yeah, yeah, okay. Very much Stephen King, yeah. 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 I've never watched it. Super 8 oh, is a fantastic it. film. Just stop the last 15 minutes. Okay. I mean, honestly, I, I could almost tell you the exact point. Stop watching. You're like, okay, that was a good movie. I wonder how it ended. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> grab, a, grab a straw. It's like he doesn't know how to end a movie. He doesn't. And this is stuff he writes, right? He wrote that one. He wrote... Uh, well, he Lost. wrote Lost, and then of course, yes, I know, I know, I got, I get tailed because it, he didn't write the ending. I know he didn't, but he didn't write an ending at all. He did not know where it was going to go. He's good at putting the subplots in there, and setting story. up the mystery, but he has no idea on how to end it. And so the the series creators had to move forward and kind of end his story. And obviously, they did a terrible job too. But J.J. Abrams was not involved in that. He didn't have an idea of how he wanted that series to end. I haven't watched that either. It's not worth it, sadly. It's a fantastic oh, show. Fantastic. Everybody, the whole time it was going on, people were like, you got to watch it. you got to watch it. I'll, wait I'll tell you when to stop. So I can, I'll I tell can you when, it. when you see Black Smoke, that's when you just stop the episode and just don't watch anymore. Okay. When you see Black Smoke, would you say so? That's not spoiling anything. Yeah, because that that, Black Smoke was definitely a disappointment. The creature on the island is like, what's the big mystery? Oh, smoke. Oh, wow. Yeah. And oh, once, they're going here. I didn't know you were going to do that spoiler for him, but once you see, <laughs> once you see that the, uh, the yeah the big mystery creature is just a pile of black smoke, that's when you should have known it's time to get out of Dodge. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing, and then it just it just crashed and burned from there on out. I don't know what season that was, but it just was like, one. What's the cheapest thing we can do? Yeah, have a regular special. This is a TV thing. show, and we like it. We don't spend much money. We're just sitting on an island. You know, all day long filming, but we still don't want to spend money, and we've built up this big creature for years. Let's finally show them CGI smoke. <laughs> they didn't even Pe- need real smoke. Fans are gonna, you know, fans are gonna go nuts over this. Then you're just looking back, wondering, okay, what? What? They were reacting that way to smoke. You know, wasn't this time? creature like taking people and yeah. killing them at some point? Yeah, it could do that. Yeah, the black so, smoke yeah. could do that. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's really bad. Wow. But it just gets worse after that. It just because you're like, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? And then, like, Walter. Remember that kid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sucks that we never finished this story because <laughs> screw Walter. <laughs> I mean, it's like they set this this interesting plot point, and the others want him. And they get him. Oh, no, what happens? Oh, we forgot to write about Walter. You made him the series. He was one of the big topics during yeah. the others. And you're like, Okay, now he's captured. When's he coming back? He's not. He kind of grew up, and we kind of don't know what to do with him now. So uh, <laughs> we don't know what happened to him. We don't know. He just—it was a big plot point. They just decided to drop. I mean, it just—it wow. was—it got worse and worse. But you kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, oh, water, water's going to come back. It's going to be whoa. Because the kid was very interesting, but they didn't have a story for him, so they wrote him out. Uh, they, but they didn't write him out well. They built up a, a cliffhanger and then decided, how are we going to end this? I don't know. Just just screw it. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things about it. Like you can't, you can't. The rule, a rule is you can't have children on the island. That's why children are coveted. And this uh, girl was pregnant and has a kid, and so it's a miracle kid. No kid has ever been on the island before, because so that's a big miracle. And that's interesting. Ooh, but then they run into Rousseau or Renee, the French woman. And what happened? Well, she's trying to find her son that she had on the island. Wait a minute. I thought having kids was, huh? Oh, it's just and rare you're, now. You're thinking, oh, well, she's special. Is that kid special? No, there's nothing special with her kid. There's nothing special with her either. You're like, what was the point? They thought it would be a good hook. They forgot that they already set up this mystery that no child has ever been. Well, that's what the others say. No child can be born here. That's why it's a miracle. And you're like, okay, well, you guys know that lady, the crazy lady that's been on the island forever? You know, she had a son here. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to get roasted because the last time I mentioned this, the Lost fans jumped all over me. J.J. Abrams did not write the ending. I know he didn't write the ending, but he didn't have an ending. Anyway, Crossroads of Twilight. <laughs> oh, is that what we're doing? I think so. <laughs> I'm running out of notes here, so we have to do a lot of ad libbing here in between. <laughs> so, Elaine is having twins. Yeah. We, we reveal that That's in this book. That's thing is, I guess. Um, they, they only let her have goat's milk and very weak tea. Yeah, very weak tea. So weak. She's so mad. She has to drink weak tea. 
why can't she have strong tea and buttered bread and jam or whatever? Like, I don't know. Because this was written in the, what, like, nine Oh, I have to say something. Butter. I know you like the people who read. Yeah. The guy's good. I, I've decided I don't like the girl. Don't like his wife. Did, did you, how she read the dark one? I'm yeah. a bad guy. <laughs> you should not that do count. this. Yeah. It's you like when my mom. Yeah, the, the, uh, the big, the dark the big one. Merge roll? The merge roll, the dark one, kind of yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so it's actually, like my mom trying to, to make fun of me or reading a bedtime story. And the big bad wolf came down the stairs. I was like, yeah, she's reading what? it while inhaling. It's uh, hot, my God. That. Oh my gosh! It, it was. I just watched an interview with her and Michael Kramer on somebody's. And uh, did she podcast. apologize? <laughs> you know, but they were talking about how they have to come up with all these different voices. I mean, yeah, but you tried. don't have to it suck did, when tried. you do it. It was all. I, 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 I wasn't that. You know, I wouldn't bother. Me it didn't bother me. I did. Much. I didn't like it at all. You hate women. That's <laughs> no. Robert Jordan hates women, but I, I'm just. <laughs> I, I just didn't know. I didn't, know. I didn't like it because the whole time I was like, man, that sounds terrible. That what? And they and someone in the recording sh- studio should have been slapped and been like, hey, um, whatever, what's her name? Kate. Kate. Hey, Kate. Um, unless you're gonna grab a straw, cause that sucks. Let's read. Let's redo this. Because it was really bad. And like every time I was listening, to it, I was like, oh, please stop, 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 stop. Because it was like my mom trying to make a bad guy voice, you know, when she's reading a bedtime story to us. I, I did not like it. So I know you like them, and yeah, I like I, him, but I just you know, and, and then and then I don't know, maybe maybe I didn't have anything else to do while we were listening to this novel, <laughs> but ju- <laughs> but critique her voice. But then I got to be like, you know what? I don't like hardly any of her voices. I so think, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you just don't like any of the women. Yeah, I mean that's true too. That's true too. It's, it's hard to 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 read from somebody's perspective that is just so self-absorbed, and you have to make the voice that way, so... No, I totally... It's I totally not going to be that. a voice that you are like, oh, that's, that's a good voice, because you can't stand the character. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I just... Oh, my goodness. I mean, just... Yeah. I mean, all, it was, all the women in this book have decided they need to, to, to take control of the men. You know, oh, yeah. All the... All the I to die need to go behind all the um, Hushman mm-hmm. um, and of course you know, we, um, Elaine used to go by and uh, or Crush what's his name Frank no, no uh, Egwene Egwene oh yeah Gawain Elaine's already um, found hers yeah I mean, I mean so I'll... basically all the women have either already raped their men <laughs> or are planning to go commit rape on Moss at the Black Tower but at least Matt's rapist was taken do, care of. <laughs> well, do, do you think? Do you think yes. they're going to show in the TV show? They're going to show right. Matt in the wash bin, rocking back and forth, crying, <laughs> sucking his thumb. I mean, something's got to be done about this. But the thing is, though, that's not in Crossroads of Twilight, but it should have been. Yeah. Now this is where I mean we, we've been we've been doing a good job going through the slog, okay? And these, it's safe to say, these three books are the lowest of the low, mm-hmm. and the, they do the thing is, They're not. No, they're not. They're equal quality as far as writing. They're equal quality as writing. They're it, short. They're just not a lot going on. There's nothing going on. And uh, it's just set up for, I'm hoping that it starts paying off soon. Uh, uh, in, in Knife of Dreams, you'll see us pull out of the slog. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, what was the one that guys in Path of Daggers? Yeah. Pack of, it's like, you know how Path of Daggers came to a crawl mm-hmm. at the end? Yeah. This one starts at a crawl and then slowly picks up some speed. Um, Knife of Dreams would, because I mean, yeah. originally that was going to be the second to the last one, although I don't know how that was. But he was saying twelve books at first. Yeah, at this right. point, I'm like, we have a long way to go. Yeah, no, and we still oh, have a yeah. long way to go. And so, um, well, you say that every chapter that they start with Crossroads of Twilight, this is a long <laughs> way to go. And, and <laughs> one of my annoyances with this book, you know, we had the big idea that you know Rand can make cleanse, uh, sighting, the sighting, mm-hmm. and that. Takes place off screen. No, no it, ta- no, it took place in the last book. It was, in the last book. it was in the finale of the last book where he, he cleans, he cleansed it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So we did see it. That was just going. Yeah. That was the only highlight. That was the only highlight of Winter's. Yeah, people reacting in, in this it. book. That's everybody 
is basically it, it kind of goes back in time a little bit, and you see people's oh, reaction. Right when to the, all when the they realize it's channeling, they, yeah. you know, everybody can feel it, and the women don't believe it. Right. Yeah. They don't believe it's true. They think it's the the the, the bad guys. Yeah. The bad devil were chosen. Parent and Matt and automatic. Well, they don't quite jump to Rand, but for some reason they all they, they just know it's Rand. Yeah. Right. Something. Right. Yeah, well, anytime somebody mentions them, they get the vision, and they know that he's doing something at that time, mm -hmm. um, and that Nynaeve is there, because and it's never very clear as to whether they're seeing out of his eyes, or they're seeing a scene, but... I've never thought about that. I Mainly because I was having to read Crossroads of Twilight. But. Because... I guess they're seeing it, but seeing yeah. it from his eyes, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. I never Especially, thought about it I guess like they're that. seeing it as third person. I thought they that's were. That's person. what I assumed. But I don't yeah. know. I mean, that's a good point. It's got to be, because uh, Matt talks about um, accidentally seeing Rand in bed with men. Was it an accident? <laughs> this is Matt. <laughs> this is Matt we're talking about. <laughs> Finally gets to know what Matt Rand does with the women. But then yeah. he wasn't interested because it wasn't an old book some uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. barmaid. <laughs> so, you know, can't wait to see who they get to play with that. Too bad the author's gone. And speaking of Matt, you know, we he, he realized, he found out in this book that he actually is, you know, offered his hand in marriage through the customs of those people. By, oh, does he in this one? Well, the thing is, he yeah. didn't know he was doing it. When he right. first met who was going to be his wife, Yeah, you know, he said, this is my wife. He was just in shock. Like, this is my wife. He said three times, uh -huh. and their custom, that means he, you know, she has he's to respond committed. now. He's committed, and she has to respond. Oh, yeah. I thought that was in the next book. I, I completely well, forgot. Well, I mean, maybe her response. I did forget in the next no, book. No, no, no. I, for, I forgot that he did that. Like, You're right. Yeah, he realized what's going on in this book. Okay. Yeah, okay. For, uh, yeah. I forgot about that. I, at this point... Even from Path of Daggers, all those five, four or five books, they kind of run yeah, they, together they run for together. me. I've been noticing that a lot. I mean, yeah. I made some, a few yeah. notes. For it Cross really Twilight. should have been one book. I could definitely say that. Yeah. I mean, well, the TV show, I mean, can put all of these in one oh, season yeah. and not skip a beat. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we talked about that by shortening, because it's, what, 14 books? Mm -hmm. But you could shorten five of them easily. And so nine seasons, but you could even shorten a few more. But oh, yeah. yeah. Nine I would seasons would imagine that would, they're going to do at least the first two books but, in the first season. Yeah, but nine seasons wouldn't be rushing it either. I mean, you know, you're not rushing through anything because those five books all tie together. And you could do that in one season and have some, yeah, have some time been, to spare. Probably bring in another book. Probably been 23 days for these three books. Then it's been a long 23 <laughs> days. It's like Robert Jordan wrote about every hour within those 23 days. And you're like... We have nothing else to talk about there, so I mean, but but the, but the thing is, you do hang in there because it will get better, and that's that's the thing. At this point, it's nothing but sky's the limit. I mean, I would say each book after this one just climbs up yeah. higher and higher and better and better. You're actually on the last one right now. I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm so it's probably about. But it just keeps four or five hours away. From, from here on out, it keeps building. Like we're gonna have a. Oh, yeah. A few more things to talk about with Night of Dreams, and then we're going to take off, man, yeah. with so much stuff to talk about. So I, I, I will I, say... I may end up going back and rereading the last three again, mm -hmm. just before we record. Or at least Dang, that's some dedication there. I might do it at two times speed, you know. That's but, dedication. But full of Bruce on that one. <laughs> two, uh, two times, two and a half. <laughs> uh, two and a half. That, that way I can kind of keep... Because even though the last three are... I mean, it's a ton of stuff. Hmm. Um, it all starts running together when you listen to them one right after another. True. Um, it's one reason why I have to listen yeah. and record. I don't want to get the next book started yeah. in my brain. Right. I well, I text y'all. Let's do this tonight. When I had an hour left. Yeah. Uh -uh. And knife knife of dreams. You'll get through that one pretty quick too. Yeah. It doesn't get to you get to Brandon Sanderson. Does the does the page count increase? Sure. And that's only <laughs> after the second first book. First book's a regular size, but then the yeah. next two books are the jumbo Robert Jordan spe special out. Yeah, and they start getting bigger and bigger. But Over I mean, forty hours. Yeah. Oh, geez. But but it's all good stuff. Oh yeah. That's the amazing it's, thing. It's it, almost you're not a dull moment. you're not counting chapters like you are in these in these slog books. 
Yeah. You're saying how much how much more time? Oh, dang. It had to have been hard for people that were buying them as they came out. And that yeah. and we talked about this a little bit for Winter's Heart, but yeah, I can't I can you imagine waiting a year over a year and finally the next yeah. book comes out. You devour it in a matter of days and you say nothing happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you expect to get from point A to point B and to, to have gotten somewhere. And yeah. then you, you finish reading, you're like, well, I'm still kind of in the same place. Right. Like, Igu- Egwene is, is still um, uh, assaulting the, the White Tower. Right. Elaine is still trying to get on the throne. Perrin is still trying to find his wife. Matt is still trying to get away from Ebudar. And, and with uh, he's with Luca in this one, right? Mm-hmm. And they're, they're traveling in the wagon. I mean, it's it's all the same thing. Then you read right. the next book, and it's all the same yeah. stuff. Nothing but the same stuff. I agree. So that's the problem. So there. It, I mean, so should you read it? I mean, yeah, because well, yeah, because you, now you're getting out you of the slog. To. You have to read it, but you're getting out of the slog, and don't be discouraged because yeah. at this point, it's I was getting discouraged. Yeah, it's, it's it, just know there is a nice shining light, yeah. pun there, intended, there at the end of the yes. at the end of the tunnel. Here. Yeah, there, there's definitely a payoff. Yeah, and you in just, fact, you if, just have to kind of consider it all one big. If one the big ending book. was so so, I would tell people to steer away from these books. I was thinking when I was reading through the slide, I was like, I think I'm gonna have to give away these books because I'm not enjoying this right now. Yeah, but that was the last time I had to say it because mm-hmm. things got better. Yeah, things and got the, better. The ending. Yeah, but anyway, it's see, we, we want to talk about boring. other books besides yeah. Crossroads of Twilight. So <laughs> I want to bring back the conversation and say, have y'all seen McMillions? A oh, documentary, huh? My wife loved it. That's pretty know. fun. Yeah, you told me about that. I love that. It's about uh, the McDonald's uh, Monopoly game. Oh. Was a scam from 1987, from its inception. It was run by the mafia. No way. And McDonald's had no clue. Okay, McDonald's okay, contracted it. out uh, to a guy the, who was game, so they didn't really control it. Yeah, and then they had somebody uh-huh. that worked at the place that printed the stuff. Printed the tickets. Who was he? Was a security, and he got linked with the mafia, and it got out. And the thing is, though, the funny thing is, the newspaper after it came out was saying we could have kicked ourselves because it was obvious. Because mm-hmm. for the longest, and the mafia, the guy's wife said, "You're an idiot." You have nothing but Sicilians winning on the East Coast. You need to get a different type of winner. Mm. Because the first, what, six winners or something, were all Sicilians <laughs> from New Jersey, New York, you know, in the same area. Right. But no one put it together. They had different last names, but well, they were we, cousins. We don't bro- really care. Yeah. They, they, they right. contracted it out. You know, they were making billions. They were just making oh, money yeah. off of it. Off of it. So they didn't they care didn't who won. That no, but no one was paying attention that everyone who won at first was on the East Coast, Sicilian, you know, mafia, and because the thing is, he just he uses his ne- his niece won, and she gave him half the winnings. That was the deal. Uh-huh. And then his mother-in-law won, and then his, you know, father because they had different names because they got divorced. They had to have a different name. Wow. And then she told him she said, "Hey, you need someone else." So she got a friend of hers from Jacksonville, Florida, who was black, and she let her win. And so, but it was a friend of hers, old friend of hers. Uh-huh. And so they just, they just, he, and he met, fell in love with an airline stewardess and he gave her a ticket to cash in. And so, it, but all of these people were connected. I gotta watch and, this. And, uh, oh, it's, it's great. This is an FBI case and everything that started off as a what? And they, But there's a FBI agent. It's, I would not even believe it if it wasn't true, but yeah. he is an FBI, but he does not act like, he is a, he is a ham. He is a ham. Oh, okay. And it, it, I do like. You, do you know the names of those people? Mark Devereaux. Mark Devereaux is your distinct, you know, kind of a respectable FBI agent, the old school, cool, suave, mm-hmm. and kind of square. And I mean, he and the other, the other guy's a young buck back then, and gotcha. so they kind of have this. They they kid on each other during it. Um, but it's it's actually I was like, man, this is pretty interesting. So. It's interesting how things happen, and it kind of builds up. I mean, they, they could have done a little bit better on building up some of the suspense. Uh, that were the, the times they stopped, it's a TV series, a six-episode series. Okay. But there's times where they could have 
you know, did, done some jaw dropping ending to an episode. That, I saw where they try to do that, but then in the very beginning of the first episode, they drop a bomb and then go to the, you know, introduction. I was like, that should have been saved for the last part of the last episode. But when did they start the Monopoly game? 80, 1987. So started through that long 1987 now. through 2001, you had zero chance of winning unless you knew that guy and you had, he'd make you a deal. But they, they've done it since then, haven't they? Yes. Okay. They catch it back. Do you know why we never heard about this scam? No. They revealed it because just a, just a few weeks later, 9-11. So it was all over the news and then disappeared. Wow. The whole thing went out of the public eye before. And say, so if it hadn't been for 9 11, this would have been. So McDonald's got lucky. Yeah. Because this was looking really bad for McDonald's. And then this happened. And then no one's talked to McDonald's. And so they kind of got off the hook. And they fired that agency. And that agency went out of business. And the printing, the secured printing press, which had tons of it, that went out of business too because the, it was a breach in security. And that was one right. man. But unfortunately, those two companies, everyone lost their jobs. Oh, and it was okay. just, it's really tough. But, uh, you know, they do the where are they now and stuff. But it's just, it's just really interesting to see and to know and understand. And now McDonald's does run it. And it's just completely above board and everything. But I don't know, man. I don't trust that. <laughs> that was it. But it was, it's a really good, uh, someone uh, who uh, I did a uh, podcast on documentaries on Saturday morning Santa plans. And they, it was brand new. This is a newer one that just came out yeah, on HBO. Like, yeah, was a few months ago. Yeah, and uh, so I decided to watch it, and it was actually pretty good. I mean, the thing is, you need to eat some McDonald's while you watch it. <laughs> I know, I don't even care about McDonald's, but when I see them munching on Big Macs and fries while working a case, I'm like, dude, I could go I could go for some <laughs> McDonald's. I'm on my diet, though, but I mean, my wife was watching it with me. She went, I want some fries. I went, I know, this is dangerous. <laughs> That's about the that. only thing at McDonald's that I was still... Have a craving is the McRib. I agree. So Actually, good. Those are pretty good. Yeah, those are pretty. Thank you. I'm glad you have some but, taste. But it's, it's class. But it's just ground pork that's you know pressed into something that kind of has ridges. It's better than Crossroads of Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's that tie in again. <laughs> All right, is there anything else you guys want to add about Crossroads of Twilight? Uh, what, it, was there Since we talked about everything else. Nothing. Else? nothing I had nothing else. Any, any specific I will, character. No, there's no, nothing. No parents but, tortured. I mean, that was interesting. I remember yeah. um, about a month or so ago, Stephen came in. It was right before you came in. I can't remember which which episode we were doing. It may have been new. Uh, uh, what was the prequel? New Spring. New Spring. But you said, "Dude, I just finished Crossroad to Twilight." And I said, "And?" And you went, "Nothing happened." I went, "I know." You went, "No." In the entire book, nothing. I said, "I know." He said, and "You said no." I couldn't tell you one significant thing. I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about that a few yeah. a few books ago. So, yeah. I, but I, that's that's really all I had because really not. I mean, I think Elaine's twins is the only, that she's having twins is the only big news. Yeah. But it's not even that big. But we don't know prior what, to that that she's having the, twins. The uh, Egwene's. The rebel likes to die in this thing. They're they're camped outside the outside of Tarvalin. Tarbo- yeah. Yes. That happened at the beginning of. I think I think kind of way. Okay. I remember. I think it was at the very end of one of the books. They stepped through the the gateway to start their siege. It must be the next book. Oh, okay. I mean, the thing is, the siege. Well, no, really, the last, last bit in this book about the siege was them talking about it. And they really were, you know, he was convincing them that they needed to, you know, gear up so that it doesn't last 20 years. <laughs> right, okay. So but, they, they did, she didn't, they didn't step through the gateway at the end of this book? You know, start. yes, yes. Okay, yes. that's what I was thinking. Okay. Because they're, so they're, they're set up, um, I think somewhere in... Field on or something like yeah. that, and they they take a big gateway just outside of Tarvalin's walls, and that's where they start their siege. Yeah, they they do that right at the end of the book. So yeah, that's that's about the only significant thing. That's about it. Like I said, it it just moves the chess piece to their their proper mm-hmm. place for the next book. Right. All right. All right. So yeah, 
the, there you have it. That's Crossroads of Twilight. Not much, but hey, you know what? From here on out, we'll be able to talk more about each one of the books Yeah. as they build up. So you, you've successfully made it through the slog of these podcasts as we go through the slog <laughs> of the last three books. And uh, we'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe.